All right, guys, we're going to be prepping out the golf cart, removing the stripes, getting it sanded down, fixing anything we have to. That way we can get it primed up or maybe even just seal this thing and shoot it. So we're going ahead now and doing that and uh, let's get to it. All right, guys, we're back to prepping out this cart and I'm just cleaning it now. It had some glue on it. We're cleaning up the glue on it and now we're going to remove the pinstripes. I got my eraser wheel. You gotta go easy when you're doing these plastics. You guys know that you'll gouge them, you'll burn it, and it'll leave holes in this plastic when you're using the stripe wheel. So you gotta be real careful with that. We're gonna go nice and easy on that. Remove that rivet, cause that's now gonna be in a different spot. And start sanding it down, prepping this panel out. It looks pretty clean, so I'm not sure we're gonna have to do too much body work on it. But we're gonna start out with 320 after we remove the stripe. All right, guys, we got the stripe off and I came into something funny here. I thought I'd show you guys. The reason they put that stripe on is because they solvent popped this whole area here in the paint when they must have painted this the last time and they put that pinstripe over it to hide it. But I don't know if you guys can see it there, but it's all solvent popped on this whole edge right where this stripe was, both sides. So I thought that was funny right there too. Looks like he popped it and then he decided to put a stripe over the top of it. So I'm not going to say I haven't done things like that in the past to get things to go. And these carts are uh, something you probably would try that on. So it worked. No one knew it was there until now. So let's go ahead and 320 this thing down and see what we got. We got this taken off pretty good. We didn't really gouge it up at all. A couple spots did, but that's how it is with this plastic. It's tough to get stripes off of it. So let's go ahead and 320 it out. All right, so we went ahead and 320 the whole thing and we had some gouges in it from her running into some stuff with it maybe, but a couple of nicks. And I think I'm going to just go ahead and prime it. That way I know that I'm good because I don't want to take any chances and uh, have to seal it and then sand it in the booth and do all that. So I'm going to just prime it because this seemed like some kind of a repaint that somebody put on here, especially with that solvent pop. I want to make sure that the primer fills in that pop that it had on the edge. So we're going to go ahead now, go around it with a red scotch bright, and this piece will be prepped for primer. Then we'll move on to the body, get that thing prepped out. I'm sure that's gonna need primer because that had a couple more gouges than this did. So let's go ahead and get this scuffed out and then move on to that next piece. And the good thing about this is, this is the same steps you would do on a car. So follow this you know, through. And uh, if you got something small you wanna try painting, this is the same steps you would do on a car. So let's go ahead and scuff it up. We got the front of that thing ready. It's all ready for primer. And now we're gonna move on to the body and that thing's real dirty. So we're gonna use Dawn dish soap with a red scuff pad. Go ahead and scuff and clean it, get it cleaned up and start on this part here. So let's do that. All right, it's all scuffed up. We cleaned it and scuffed it. And now we'll let it dry here and we'll continue on with the same steps that we did to the front piece. Pull the stripes, be careful. Like I said, if you're using an eraser wheel, whenever you remove a stripe on plastic, it could definitely gouge it and you'll end up making a big mess in the plastic. So if you're not real familiar with doing that, Try a little spot, check it out, see if you got it under control. You gotta go real slow with it. Don't build up speed when you're taking them off or it's gonna make big gouges in your plastic. And many of us in the business know what that has uh, done for us. A lot of the body men do that to us. So be careful with that. 
and uh, we're gonna let it dry and start on that and start sanding it down and getting it ready. All right, guys, we got the stripe off and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit some of these bigger gouges that are in this plastic with the 180. And you guys know in plastic, you can get a lot out. So you don't really have to do too much filler work in this stuff. You can usually get out pretty good amount of gouges in it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and hit some of the bigger gouges that are in it with the 180 and then come back with the 320 and get it all smoothed out for prime. So let's go ahead and get that finished up. All right, so you see what I mean about taking out the gouges. You just want to make sure you hold it flat and work the contour of whatever you're doing. And you can sand out quite a bit on a plastic part. So let's go ahead and finish this thing up. guys we're using the old Tecna Pro Light with the 1.4 in it and this here primer is mixed 4 1 to 1 four parts of the primer surfacer one part of the hardener and then one part of the reducer so let's go ahead and get this thing primed up we're gonna put two decent nice coats and you guys know I'm a big fan of that Sherwin primer but this PPG is also a very good top-of-the-line primer that I used for many many years also so Let's put this stuff on here and get these things primed up so that in our next video, we can go ahead and sand them and get this candy on these uh, nice parts here. So that's one coat. I'm gonna let it flash for about five minutes, come in and put one more on it. And then we're gonna guide coat this one because this primer isn't shiny like the Sherwin is. So once this thing is flashed off, we're gonna hit it with a guide coat of the can, just so that way you could see what you're doing with this one because this one isn't a shiny primer. It's more of an old school look. It's got that dull, nice satin look to it. So I like to use the spray can on these. After I prime them up, I'll hit them with the can. That way it's all ready to sand and I don't have to guide coat it later. Sometimes that old uh, dusty guide coat can make a mess and it gets all over the place. So I like using the spray can. So we're gonna let it flash. I'm gonna go ahead and put one more coat on and then I'll show it to you guys and we'll guide coat it. All right, we went ahead and we put the second coat and it's flashed. So now we're gonna go ahead and guide coat it and you can use any kind of a paint. You don't have to really be too picky with it. You're just looking for it to leave a speckle on it. So this one here is gonna leave just enough to see what you're doing. That way when you sand it, you take away that and it'll stay in any little chips that may still be in this thing. But I like using it on this primer here because it's not shiny like the uh, Sherwin primer is. So let's go ahead and finish guide coating it. All right guys, so we got it all ready now to paint. On the next video, we're gonna prep it and paint it and we'll be using that uh, same brandy wine we put on the Cutlass. So we'll put the same gray base down and then we'll put on the candy and we'll go through step by step on how we do it that way if anybody didn't catch the last video and you're on to this video here about the candy we're going to go over this one too step by step so hit subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next video when we start laying the candy down on this one so see you guys next time